Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. I can't believe it, but another breeding season of Boas is just around the corner to do the pairings. So today I want to show you some of the beautiful Boas that I'm planning on pairing up in the next few weeks. And hopefully these guys will be producing some beautiful baby Boas in 2024. Time sure flies when you're breeding Boas and it feels like I was just pairing up Boas last year and now we're on to the next breeding season already. So it's not, right now it's currently mid-October. My plans are to give my boas another feeding and then probably wait about a week to a week and a half and then start the pairings. So and that'll be around the end of October, beginning of November. At the same time, I'm gonna drop the temperature slightly at night for some, but probably not all my boas, just depending on what's worked in the past. And then I'll start pairing them up in November. Uh, they'll probably be paired up non-stop for about a month and a half to two months through December. And then I'll start separating them out to feed them uh, about once a month or so, then putting them back together until I have gravid females or until like May or June. And I decide that it's just not gonna work out that year, this year for that particular pairing. But anyway, today I wanted to show you some of my breeding pairs. I don't have the full lineup completely set, but I have a pretty good idea and a lot of really nice boas that are going to be paired up in 2023 to 2024 with uh, hopes of having babies for 2024. And to start with, I thought I'd show you this guy. This is a really special boa. This is a Honduran fire belly boa. This guy was born here back in 2018 and I held him back. He was actually my favorite from the litter. I loved his pattern and colors. And you can see he's got this beautiful pinkish orangish fire belly and just a beautiful look to this guy mostly patternless and he's got that really distinctive head shape the short head with the big orangey brown eyes that we see on these under and fire bellies just a really cool looking boa and a lot of you guys have been reaching out to me asking about the hunter and fire bellies unfortunately these animals have gotten really hard to find i honestly don't know anyone else who's producing them so I hope to have another litter in 2024. I didn't, haven't had a litter in the last couple of years, but with any luck, we'll have some babies in 2024. These guys are said to come from the island of Roatan off of the coast of Honduras, and just a really cool looking animal. Um, the Honduran fire belly boa, a must for the locality collector, particularly if you like Central American island boas. I have quite a few true red tail BCC pairings planned for 2023 to 2024. This one I wanted to show you. She's a little bit wild, which is why I put her in this bag so she maybe a little calm down a little bit for the camera. But this is a beautiful 2017 born Prometheus Bloodline Suriname female. And this one is from my second litter that I had with Prometheus, which is a different mother from the earlier litter in 2016. So this is a half sibling to my other Prometheus bloodline animals. And this female is now six years old. I haven't paired her up before. She was kind of a slow grower, but she's put on quite a bit of size in the last year. She's got this beautiful pink coloration, beautiful red tail. Unfortunately, she's a little wild. I don't really handle her that much. Um, not aggressive, just kind of a little wild, but uh, beautiful looking animal. I plan to pair her up with one of her half siblings from the other Prometheus litter so that the babies will have a 50% contrib contribution of the founder Prometheus, but different mothers, so not quite as inbred. So really excited about this one. Hoping to produce some really beautiful Prometheus line Suriname True Red Tails in 2024. In addition to quite a few true red tail, Suriname true red tail pairings, I also have some Peruvian true red tail pairings as well, including this female. This is a Pacalpa Peruvian female. She actually produced a litter in 2022, which was her first litter. And I plan on pairing her up again. So hopefully have another really nice litter. Beautiful yellow animal, lots of, or uh, reduced pattern. You can see these narrow, slightly peaked saddles. Really beautiful looking animal. She's quite chunky as you can see. Uh, fortunately, she's a little less uh, wily than the Suriname female, a little calmer. So she's not as challenging to handle. 
but just a really beautiful inquisitive animal looking around there and with any luck we'll have another litter and it's probably the summer of 2024 if things work out maybe the fall but we'll just have to see um, and I have another Peruvian pair as well that uh, is from my Iquitos animals which to me they look pretty similar to the Pacapa animals but I know some people are convinced there's a difference so I keep them separate um, but we'll just have to see beautiful Pacapa Peruvian true red tails in 2024 one more type of true red tail that I'm going to be pairing up for 2024 and that is the Venezuelan true red tail like this one this guy is a male from the Rio Bravo bloodline bred by my friend Mike Lucchese uh, this guy was born back in 2017 and he's never been bred before so hopefully we'll have some baby Venezuelans sometime in the next summer we'll just have to see I didn't get any uh, Venezuelans in 2023 unfortunately I had a litter in 2022 which was my first one and I have some whole backs that are doing really well but uh, there's less experience I have certainly have less experience with the Venezuelans I think there's less collective experience in the bow hobby than with these guys than with the Surinams or Peruvians but we'll just have to see as you can see he's smaller than the other the Peruvian and Surinam this guy's maybe I don't know I'd say about five feet and he's not really cooperating today either I don't know maybe something's in the air with these boas maybe they know that uh, breeding season is just around the corner and they're starting to get a little antsy but whatever the reason we'll put him back in a sec but I really like these Venezuelans they're smaller than the other true red tails they have this beautiful yellow golden coloration and bow tie shaped saddles really a cool locality bow to work with the Venezuelan true red tail boa got kind of a workout holding those true red tails so I thought I'd grab this one this is a dwarf boa female Tarhimhar mountain dwarf boa that I am planning on pairing up these guys always seem a little bit more mellow when I take them out they don't move around as much and they don't uh, pose as much of a challenge while I'm trying to operate the camera uh, so this female was born here in 2018 and I've been growing her up ever since so she's now a little over four feet long about as big as she'll get and uh, plan on pairing her up I had a very small litter of Tarahumara this year very late actually just a few weeks ago just had two babies and that was it but uh, this year I plan on having two pairs of Tarahumara I've actually got quite a few females ready to go not 100% sure which ones I think this one and I think I'm gonna pair one of my 2017 females as well that produced babies uh, back in 2022 but we'll just have to see but uh, hopefully I'll have hopefully I'll have some really nice litters of these animals these are really uh, sought after they have a lot of advantages they have the full boa constrictor experience and more of a pint size package it's a little more manageable and also a beautiful coloration and they're really docile and uh, rewarding to work with so hopefully we'll have some nice beautiful Tarhumara Mountain Dwarf Boas in 2024 another dwarf boa that I will be pairing up in a few weeks this is the Cocker Key Dwarf Boa from a small island off the coast of Belize this is my female these animals don't get much bigger if at all bigger than the Tarhumara so she's full size this one is about I don't know four feet four and a half feet long this one was a 2016 baby uh, produced by Chris Wolf and doing real well she had her first litter two years ago produced a nice litter I think it was around 10 babies and actually I kept a few of them that are doing real well the rest of them are out some of you guys watching might have the babies um, but hopefully we'll have another litter in the summer and uh, that was actually my first litter with the Cocker Key Boas and so I just wanted to comment you probably have noticed some of these Boas are looking a little chunky and 
these guys, these females especially, they need to have the, a little bit of extra weight when they go into breeding. I know a lot of people are obsessed with the weights of their boas, and you see all these comments online about, oh, that boa's fat or this and that. They need to have extra weight when they go into the breeding season because it's gonna be a while before they feed. Some of them might be two up to about five months if they refuse food while they're grabbing. So the last couple months I've been really giving these females that are gonna go into breeding extra meals and as you can see they're a little bit on the chunky side now but believe me they're going to need that extra weight to produce healthy litters of babies um, and they'll lose quite a bit of weight in the months ahead so they're just fine and you don't need to be obsessed about the weight of your boa or other boas i know it's a popular subject for people on facebook to you know go crazy about but just relax i mean there are a lot of fat boas out there don't get me wrong but uh, there's also a lot of boas that are underfed as a result of people not wanting to overfeed their boas. So just use common sense, as I've said in the past. But these females are in good shape to go into breeding. So hopefully we'll have some of these beautiful Cocker Key Dwarf boas in the summer of 2024. If you've been following the channel, you know that the vast majority of the boas that I work with here at Brian Boas are locality boas, but I do have a few morph boas, and the last few years I've started to pair up and breed my morph boas, and so this guy is one of my favorite morph boas. This is a moon glow male. He has the call albino as well as the hypo um, and the anorithristic gene, and just an amazing example of the power of mutations in a boa to just totally transform their appearance. Truly a designer boa, the Moonglow boa, which of course only exists in captivity because of the selective breeding of breeders and what I consider to be a domestic animal at this point. So this guy is now about four years old. He'll be paired up for the first time. And so I have selected for him a, uh, I'm pairing him up with a, um, IMG Hypo female. So this guy is probably my lightest boa in the collection. The IMG Hypo female is probably my darkest boa. And she is IMG, which is the increasing melanin gene. So she's gotten darker and darker as she's grown. And she is now not quite pure black, but pretty close to pure black with a little bit of white and brown flecking. So it should be a really cool pairing because my female is het for call albino. So with any luck, I'll have, I'll get some uh, IMG albinos as well as um, IMGs hat for albino. And they're all, they all will be hat for anorithristic because this male is anorithristic as part of the Boon Glow package. So really cool morph boa pairing. I have a few other morph boa pairings planned as well, which I'll just keep a surprise for now. But with any luck, we'll have some really nice IMG combos uh, in the summer of 2024. Just a few more boas to share with you. And this is a female who produced her first litter back in 2022. She is a Coops Pastel Colombian boa. And I plan on pairing her up again with my Coops male in a few weeks. Hopefully we'll have some babies in 2024. So the Coops Pastel is a selectively bred line of Colombian boas started by a gentleman in, in Europe, continued by Vin Russo. And with every generation, they seem to be getting more and more orange color. This female was particularly deeply colored as a baby. And she actually had some really beautiful uh, babies a couple years ago. I held back a few of them. They're doing really great and they're really intensely colored. Some of you guys out there got some of her offspring as well. So hopefully you're enjoying them. As I said before, I really like the Colombian boas. I think they're great as far as pets. They're docile, they're handleable, they're uh, low maintenance as far as the husbandry, and very non-demanding, and a really great animal to take out and handle. So with any luck, we'll have some baby Colombian Coops Pastel boas born sometime in 2024. And these have both the mother and the father as Coops Pastel, uh, otherwise known as a double dose Coops Pastel which really makes the colors pop even more. One more boa for today's video. This is a female that I'll be pairing up in a few weeks. This is a Longicata boa. This female was uh, 
we had her first litter two years ago in 2022 and she's doing real well I think she's actually gotten even darker since uh, she had her litter and if you know about these longicata one of the really cool things about them is they undergo a metamorphosis where they get more and more dark coloration as they get bigger the babies are kind of a gray with with dark uh, like black markings and then as they grow they get more and more black pigment until as adults they're one of the darkest types of boas this is a female from the Bassett bloodline and uh had a really nice litter a couple years ago kept a couple of them that are growing up really nicely some of you guys out there have some of the other babies hopefully they're doing great but with any luck we'll have another litter of longicata in 2024 i didn't have any in 2023 actually just checked my records this female had her litter in 2021 so it's been um, about two and a half years since her first litter and if she has one in 2024 it'll be three years uh, so apologies for the mistake that i made but um actually it was my other female produced in 2022 the vin russo bloodline and i didn't have any in 2023 but with any luck we'll have some babies from this girl sometime in the summer and the longicata are a great bow to work with they're not a dwarf but they don't get that large maybe five to six feet like this one they're a cool looking boa they're relatively easy as far as the husbandry enjoyable to handle just a really rewarding boa and something a little bit different that uh, not everybody out there has heard of but the people that keep these longicata really seem to love them and they definitely have a cult following. Anyway, I hope to have babies from all these animals sometime in the summer. Maybe a few other litters as well. We'll just have to see. As always, shoot me any questions or comments you might have. I hope you enjoyed the video. And you might be interested in some babies from some of these pairings for next year. But just stay tuned to the channel for updates on the breeding activities. And hopefully we'll have some litters on the ground in a few months from now. Anyway, thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.